Four years ago, the Pioneer made its debut on the mountain bike stage racing scene. It became an instant classic, combining the best New Zealand scenery with a challenge quite unlike anything else. The race has established itself as a true must-do event, part of the Epic series, with sister events the Absa Cape Epic and the Swiss Epic. Accordingly, this is no small undertaking. Over six days, riders will cover 400 kilometres and climb over 10,000 metres. It is known to bring people to tears and will reward the determined with a sense of accomplishment that can be found in very few places. In 2019, the Pioneer returns to the mountains of Queenstown and central Otago, once again inviting riders from all over the world to find stunning, find welcome and find character. This is the 2019 Pioneer, fuelled by Nutrigrain. The 2019 Pioneer, fuelled by Nutrigrain, opened with the 32km time trial prologue at the iconic Moat Lake near Queenstown. This is a chance to warm up the legs and find your place in the field on some of the best single track and backcountry trails in the area. It's a magnificent spot for a ride and a perfect introduction to the event. We're just moving into the new neighbourhood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> House and land package. Yeah, yeah. yeah. bad neighbours. No, excited, yeah, nervous and scared. It's such an incredibly long road to get here and you know, the, the hours of training and the time away from the family and the uh, you know, work and, and everything else you're trying to balance and then to suddenly be here is amazing and be part of it. So uh, yeah, very cool, can't wait. This is a pairs event for two person teams and over 300 mountain bikers from all over the world have made their way to New Zealand to tackle the fourth edition of the race. The 2018 champions in the mixed, open women's and open men's events have returned to try and defend their titles, but there are a number of top teams having their first crack at the race. The giant off-road Australia team of Brendan Johnston and John Odoms will certainly be one to watch, starting the week in the yellow jersey. A race like the Pioneer is not just about winning, however, and there is just as much respect for the last riders over the finish line as there is for the winners. Welcome, ladies. Nippy morning this morning, but uh, yeah, looking forward to today. They had a red sky this morning, so hopefully it's not that shepherd's warning they all talk about. But uh, yeah, lovely day today. I'm looking forward to the stage. Get to Alex where it might be a bit warmer. But uh, yeah, no, looking forward to tomorrow and the next day, and the next day, and then a nice comfortable bed on Friday night. Just put a little bit of hot sauce on the legs. It makes you feel like it's race day. If you could smell it. That's what it smells like, race day. Five, four, three, two, one. Have a great day, Pioneers. Stage one, 76 kilometers. Have a wonderful day. Look at them go. There are no gentle introductions on the Pioneer. Ahead of the riders lies one of the longest stages of the week, but also one of the most anticipated. Leaving Moak Lake through some remote backcountry, the riders make their way to the Shotover River and on to the Queenstown Trails Network before the big challenge of the day, the 8km, 800m climb up to Coronet Peak. The reward is some of the best single track riding in New Zealand, taking the riders to the finish line in Arrowtown. It's such a great Queenstown stage with a bit of everything that makes the area such a mecca for mountain bike riding. Queenstown just rolls everything into one. You know, it's, it's nice and central and uh, they've got so many good mountain bike trails there. So we always wanted to incorporate some of that into the course. The beautiful, smooth, boomed, purpose-built stuff, which riders just love. But, 
you know, as well as that, you've got all this backcountry, and you know, right around the back of Moonlight Track, Moak Lake, um, getting up to Coronet Peak, you've got the beautiful vistas of all the mountains. Still a little bit of snow around to uh, give people that alpine feel, uh, but it's just beautiful riding in Queenstown. So um, yeah, it's got a bit of everything. It's the opportunity to test themselves on the New Zealand trails that has brought the Australian duo of John Odoms and Brendan Johnston to the pioneer. Yeah, I mean, I haven't been over here before, so it's really good to come over and have a look. I mean, to actually have a ride around the backcountry and stuff like that, it'll be, be able to see some places that no one gets to see, so looking forward to that. The pair have won the Port to Port, Reef to Reef and Cape to Cape in 2019. They're an experienced team, but fully realise that this will be a different experience to the races they've done in Australia. You know, I guess we've built our pairing up there and then you know, to come and take on the, the Pioneer, is, it's, it's a different event, I'd say, completely. Um, just way more challenging and yeah, I think we've just built a strong sort of partnership and it's, it's a good time to take it on. There's some um, strong pairings, like uh, Michael and Tim from last year, they'll have good you know, experience and knowledge about the event, so um, yeah, it'll be good to see how we go against them. Yeah, anything can happen. One of the tightest battles of the week looks likely to be between the mixed pairs. Local team and three-time winners Mark Williams and Kate Fluker lead the way on their home trails, chased by defending champions Joe Skirman and Josie Wilcox, with debutant pair Holly and Michael Harris, winners of the multiple Australian events this year, close behind. For Michael Vink and Tim Rush, the opportunity to return and defend their title is one that they are relishing. The Pioneer in 2018 was their first mountain bike stage race and a comfortable win certainly gave them the confidence to come back. I think last year was sort of a, a bit of a, a sign that we actually are OK at this and we actually can do pretty good. Certainly to win by the margin we did last year with a, with a decent field was, um, was sort of made us sort of step back and think, oh, what, what can we actually do if we properly pursue this and start doing some bigger races? We knew we had our, the, the top here in Australia that were coming over and any time you get a top Australian team, you know it's going to be a, a, a pretty tough race. So um, we certainly were expecting a lot more fireworks than last year and we got that. We woke up sort of thinking, oh, if we've got a deficit now, we have to, we have to claw this back and all of a sudden we were the hunters and not the hunted, which uh, I think was a good position for us to be in. The road racing experience of Vink and Rush comes into play in the eight kilometre climb up Coronet Peak. The duo ride away to a two and a half minute lead at the top of the ascent. In winter, Coronet Peak is one of the busiest ski fields in New Zealand. But in summer, it becomes single track heaven. The mysteriously named Rude Rock Track is the start of a 16 kilometer section of single track that will take the riders all the way to the finish in Arrowtown. The smooth, flowing trails are the perfect reward for their eight kilometers of climbing. After making their big move on the climb up Coronet Peak, the defending champions Vink and Rush from On Your Bike North Otago ride into Arrowtown to take the first stage victory of the week. The pioneers zip up the On Your Bike jumper. It's Vink and Rush, the defending champions, putting down a marker. Um, the plan was to kind of just control it on that first single track around Moonlight and then just cruise the rest of the way and see how we felt in the climb. But we kind of, um, yeah, hit the climb probably a bit too hard and then suffered up it and, yeah, tried to hold, hold a gap on the way home, which is um, all we did. A little over three minutes later, the giant off-road Australia duo of Johnston and Odoms arrive. Um, yeah, we're mindful of that. You know, the, the winner is sort of crowned on Friday. Um, yeah, we did think we'd bring him back, maybe down the descent, um, rude rock and stuff, but I don't know, I don't, I don't think we did. I think we had possibly a similar gap at the top mm -hmm. as we did at the finish, so um, they're obviously riding well. Stage one of the Pioneer has really delivered for the riders. After 76 kilometres and with almost 2,300 metres of climbing already under their belts, the finish in Arrowtown is a welcome sight. It's been a memorable first stage. It was amazing. The downhill from Coronet Peak was fantastic. Superb riding. Oh, he was awesome. Started off steep and pinchy, which separated the field, which was great. And then top of Coronet Peak down was just world class. It was just unreal. It was like the best riding I think I've ever done in my life. So, really cool. And 
Uh, just I'm going swimming. There is a bit of a change yeah. in the weather. Just, just a little bit. Expected. <laughs> swimming, so cramping, nice slipping on logs. <laughs> Of, uh, we had a great a day. Of any rain that might be on the way. This has been a huge day by anyone's measure, but the pioneer has only just begun. From the finish in Arrowtown, the riders are now shuttled through central Otago to Alexandra. It's a short drive, but they will spend the next four days working their way back to the finish in Queenstown. Day two on the Pioneer dawns perfect. The riders have now had two nights in their tents and are definitely finding their feet. At the back we have the master bedroom uh, with the uh, chaise lounge. Uh, all, the, uh, all the clothing jammed at one far end and in the centre we have the laundry, dressing room to the far end, uh, comestibles, toiletries and power charging at, at this end. Bit of space for uh, flailing around in the middle and we'll all go. <laughs> stage two will be the Queen stage, the longest of the week and already the reality of just how demanding multi-day stage racing can be is hitting home. Um, I woke up really quite anxious this morning, just, just uh, 112 kilometres, I'm, I'm nervous. You know, we're expecting it to be a long week. You know, we just need to stay within ourselves. You know, we're not here to win, we're here to um, complete and um, you know, raise the money for the Smiles of the Pacific, so. Yeah, the, the challenge is just going to be getting up and doing this thing day after day after day. It's, um, yeah, you know, and I, can, I can go out and do a good day, but to do five good days, ooh, that's a tough one, hey? Stage two coming up, longer stage, have fun. In cycling, the longest stage of the week is known as the Queen stage. The term comes from chess, where the Queen often has the biggest effect on the game. In the Pioneer, the Queen stage means a long day in the saddle and some epic riding. 112 kilometres and over 2,500 metres of climbing through the hills surrounding Alexandra. Oh, the zips are undone. Oh, she's warm out here. Might be a, might be a sign of things to come for the day, we'll see. <laughs> Another 102 k to go and I'm stuffed, time, to, time for a beer. Stage two opens with a new section of single track before sending the riders down the Clutha and onto the epic flat top hill. From here, a long gravel section delivers the riders to Clyde for the biggest climb of the day and then it's downhill to the finish. Despite being just an hour from Queenstown, the change in scenery and topography is striking. Yeah, it's like a completely different planet. You know, it's a lot drier there and um, the vistas are completely different. You know, they, the town and the mountain bike clubs have put so much um, time and money into building these incredible trails. It's sort of a little bit unknown in some respects, so I mean, that's the great thing about these events is that they can help profile those trails. Obviously landowners, well, you don't have an event without um, the, the goodwill and support and um, partnership with the, the landowners in this region and they have been fantastic without exception and as, you know, as long as we respect the land, which we do and the riders do, um, it opens up areas which are not possible to ride every day So, and that's what's unique about these events is getting to discover those areas which are off the beaten track and not available uh, at any, any normal time of year. The first major challenge of the day comes 30 kilometres in with the trail up to Flattop Hill. A 400 metre single track climb, it is a stunning section of trail. This is what made the stage one of the most popular in 2018. But even for the returning riders, the second time around is no easier. It's harder, I think the hill got bigger. <laughs> Where's well, cool? Awesome uphill trail. But it's hard. The top is fast and flowing single track, which drops riders down to Butcher's Dam on the other side of the hill. It is a demanding section, but some of the most enjoyable riding in the race. Arriving at the top of Flat Top Hill, the open women's team of Amy Hollenby and Kate McElroy are doing a solid job defending their 2018 win. They lead by almost an hour. 
As they come up from Butcher's Dam, they are right on the wheel of the local team, Mortgage Me NZ Cycling Project. Guy Carter and Peter Bulling are Queenstown locals, but hail from Invercargill in the Deep South. Peter Bulling grew up on the velodrome down there and is a former Team Pursuit world champion and a New Zealand Olympian. Well, the biggest probably success for me was in 2015 when we won the World Championships in Paris. Um, that was huge, first time Team's Pursuit had ever won, and that was pretty special. Like there's always sort of man two rider, and that's sort of a, a power athlete. Um, so when it comes to the Pioneer, it does not really relate at all. I race 4K, I don't race 550K over six days on that, like, you know. <laughs> I'm a racer, and I've always raced, and if I see someone in front of me, I've got to get, you know, I've got to catch that. Um, so with Guy, you know, and his experience, I'll be talking to him a lot and um, hopefully he'll, you know, calm me down a little bit. You know, first of all, we want to get through the week and have fun. Um, you know, each, treat each day as it comes and, you know, the, as the race evolves, so, so will our plan. But I guess there's some big days out there and you can lose a lot of time. So it's about, you know, being consistent, keeping calm. There's days out there where the best team or any team can lose an hour, which is a significant amount of time and you know, anything can happen. Vink and Rush are proving to be worthy leaders as they head into the middle section of the stage. They've once again opened up a decent lead. However, the words of Guy Carter are prophetic and at the 60 kilometre mark, Tim Rush pulls up with a damaged rear wheel. Oh, I just burnt, just a big rock down there. Vital minutes tick away as team after team rides past. The giant Shimano off-road pair move into first, no doubt grateful for this piece of good fortune. As the pioneers head into the final third of the race, the good weather which has been hanging over the hills most of the morning finally gives way to the first rain of the week. Just in time for the biggest climb of the day. How's it? Oh, I mean this is stunning. Oh, this is brutal. <laughs> it's a tough 450 metre grunt to the top of the Cairnmuir flat, the high point of the stage at 600 metres. The mixed teams race is another tight one. Josie Wilcox is setting a punishing pace up the Earnsclaw climb, forcing teammate Joe Skernan to dig deep. The duo have pulled back over a minute on the Australian pair, Michael and Holly Harris. The Aussies led for the first half of today's stage, determined to recover from a tough stage one. I was the nail yesterday. I got punished, absolutely. I ran probably the wrong gear in. Um, I went a little bit bigger. Um, what I would run in Australia and um, I quickly changed that yesterday afternoon um, and yeah it is it is really different to the climate in Australia I, I think it's a little bit more unpredictable and yeah we're still sort of getting used to it so it's been a little bit challenging. Every race needs a queen stage to really test the field and today's stage has done that. These are big days in the saddle and the demands can expose any weaknesses ruthlessly. Right. Yeah, we're blowing, blowing to bits today. We sort of knew what we had to do. Uh, got the single track sort of our strength. We sort of worked that and we probably pushed a bit hard and then it sort of fell to bits and uh, Jeremy's tummy sort of playing up. So, yeah, it's all part of it, eh? Yeah, mate, the gasket blew. Gut's gone. Find the happy place, we'll get there. Looking like the top. Thank God. <laughs> nice. Oh. You okay? Ow. Yeah, ow. <laughs> the stage concludes with the epic descent of the Cairnmuir Flats via the Clyde Enduro track. 450 metres of flowing technical single track. The giant Shimano duo of Johnston and Odoms lead the way into the homeward stretch, capitalising on the mechanical misfortune of Vink and Rush, who have managed to ride themselves back into second place, pushing ahead of the winger Hamilton team of Ryan Sissons and Sam Osborne.
giant Shimano off-road crossed the line in 4 hours, 33 minutes and 35 seconds to take the stage victory. Vink and Rush follow 3 minutes and 17 seconds behind, ending their hold on the yellow jersey for now. And the Winger Hamilton team cross in third for their first podium of the week. Yeah. It's about time we've got to step up on the uh, stage. <laughs> Man, it's a long day on the bike. <laughs> It's really good to, to get that one done. I mean, obviously, all the, the next couple of stages are all have the same similar amounts of climbing, but in a shorter amount of time, which is, I think, maybe a little bit better in some ways. Let's see how we go. The Open women's race is firmly under the control of defending champions Kate McElroy and Amy Hollenby as they take another convincing stage win. The pair, enjoying their return to the Pioneer, are quick to offer their appreciation for the support team. Oh, it's been amazing, eh? Like, these guys were everywhere around the course today, and it's just nice to obviously see familiar faces and get the cheers and just get everything sorted, so it takes a lot of stress out of it. The support team themselves, however, not finding it so relaxing. Have you done the porridge? Have you done the washing? Have you, what's my tyre pressure? What kind of washing powder did you use? What time have you set the alarm for? Have you double checked my tyre pressure? To be honest, I'm sick of it. I'd rather be riding. <laughs> Support crew are riding, riding. <laughs> no joke. <laughs> Joe Skerman is congratulated on another stage victory by rivals and three-time winners Mark Williams and Kate Fluker. Team Jojo lead by 18 minutes. It has been a demanding day on the trail for everyone, and crossing the finish line in Alexandra is a relief. The Queen stage is behind them, and that is a big mental hurdle overcome. They are a big step closer to the finish line in Queenstown. Big day. I had, I had everything, everything you'd expect for the Queen stage of the Pioneer. Hey, I'm, I'm cooked and done, and everything is, was amazing. It's really beautiful trails, beautiful, stunning. Scenery, really. I'm absolutely glad, absolutely happy. Great to be here. Great to be here. Yeah. The final stage of each day on the Pioneer is the prize giving. As the jerseys are awarded to the category leaders who finished over six and a half hours ago, the final finisher of the day is given a special welcome in Tent City. <laughs> Patricia George rides in alone to be greeted by her injured teammate, Hap Farber and receives a huge round of applause for her efforts. For the pioneers, it's now time to start the prep and recovery. Three stages remain and the routine must continue. The weather has been kind to the pioneers so far this week, but there are literal clouds hanging over the coming days. Inside the tent at breakfast on day three, all looks well. However, it's a different story outside. Rain set in just after dawn and it is unrelenting as the start of the stage approaches. It's also unseasonably cold and snow is falling on the highest sections of the course, which are over 1,000 metres. Right, good morning everyone. So as Andrew said, we've been monitoring the conditions and because of that we're implementing two separate contingencies rolled into one. So we've made you a new course. It's going to be a bit shorter, a lot less climbing, but it's going to get you to Bannockburn a bit sooner and you can be nice and dry. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm glad you like that. In conditions that would deter most people from venturing out to the shops, the 300 pioneers set off onto stage three. The new route will detour around the highest sections of the course, but this still looks set to be a testing day on the bike. 60 kilometers and 600 meters of climbing in some wintry conditions. Having lost the yellow jersey yesterday, the Onya Bike North Otago pair of Vink and Rush are quickly to the front of the race, looking to make amends. The Kiwi pair have plenty of experience in the cold and wet. For the giant Shimano Australia team, however, this is not at all what they're used to and finding it tough going. One of the pillars of the pioneer is find character, and it's more than a simple slogan. 
the Pioneer really does test riders to the limit and digs into what they're capable of. Days like this are part of the challenge. Oh my lordy lord. Very good. Well, I have actually been doing some swim training because I had a hematoma and couldn't ride, so maybe it's going to come in useful. Rita Trotman and Nina McVicker won the Pioneer in 2017 and the pair have returned in 2019, not wanting to repeat the win, but to repeat the experience. The Pioneer was amazing. Like every day when we crossed the finish line, it was just euphoric. I think because it was still bigger and longer than any road race I'd ever done. So it was still huge, even with my background. Nina had only been cycling like two years. So it was huge for her as well. And um, you didn't really know what you were up for every day. It's just the most amazing sense of accomplishment, I guess, at the finish line. That was a really special week, 2017 Pioneer. It was amazing. <laughs> The 2017 Pioneer was Rita Trotman's first bike race since quitting the road scene. She was a promising talent but found out that the life of a pro cyclist was not the one she was cut out for and quit the sport after the Commonwealth Games in 2014. Um, Congress was my target. I guess the, like, representing New Zealand was always something that was important to me. Um, and it was like an incredible experience but probably not an incredible enough to, for another four years to get there again. I mean, I started riding because I loved the adventure. It didn't feel like an adventure anymore. It just felt like racing. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I made, like I decided to stop at a good time because I realised it wasn't making me really happy, which is what you need if you're going to pour your life into something. <laughs> As the pioneers are discovering today, the reality of something is sometimes much tougher than the dream. Making it to the top of any sport can be a dream come true, but the pressure and sacrifice that comes with it is often hidden and the toll it takes on athletes can be significant. For Peter Bulling, the dream was an Olympic medal, and when that medal slipped away, it took his love of cycling with it. We talk about the Olympic, Olympic Blues. It was sort of four years of hard work and really, really focusing on that one goal, which was an Olympic medal, and knowing that it was right there, and we missed out by, I think it was a second. It was really hard, eh? Um, but then it also made me, you know, passionate and hungry to, to go again. It lasted just about two years, and then had to walk. Yeah, yeah, lost the passion for it. Happened within a week. So I actually had no time to reflect on it. It's only been, this year that it's hit me. And I lost, yeah, I lost the love for riding my bike, <laughs> big time. Um, but I rode my mountain bike occasionally. I've watched this race for two years and I've always wanted to do it. Um, and I watch the promo videos and I watch all the, you know, the highlights and it's just, you see it in people's faces. You see the excitement, you see the pain, you see everything. And that's what, that honestly, it, it gives me goosebumps when I was watching that stuff. Me getting to the start line from where I was a year ago is a huge achievement. So there's going to be a lot of achievements this week. And as long as I'm enjoying riding my bike and me and my teammate are having fun, that's all that matters. Yeah. Lining up on a race line is always exciting. And finishing something, even though you're in the world of pain, it's an achievement. Um, but pain's enjoyable when you're out in places like this. It's cold today. Views on it's good, bro. It is what it is. Cheers! Oh, this is the good life. <laughs> oh, man. It's a little wet out today. Maybe the sun will come out. You can always hope. The bayonet. Good weather. Nice weather. Woo! Ibiza! How do you do that? After 60 kilometres of mud, rain and grit, the Kiwi pair of Vink and Rush are the first to arrive in Bannockburn and reclaim the yellow jersey. It's been a test of determination as much as anything, but the shortened stage has played to their strengths. And Rush, well done. I wish I was there. Work. With the sun nowhere to be seen, it's been the character of the riders that shone through on stage three. Proof that it's not what you get given, 
but what you do with it that truly counts. Oh, what a day to be racing a mountain bike, eh? <laughs> it's nuts. We're from Dunedin, mate. This is just a normal day. It's beautiful. Even riders from Australia, more accustomed to hot, dry conditions, have embraced the spirit of the day. Michael and Holly Harris take their first stage victory on the Pioneer. Really Usually <laughs> we're terrible in the mud, but on the start line I had this weird thing where I was like, I actually like the rain, so I decided to enjoy it. I did. Cool. <laughs> Look at this guy's face. I think that was my favourite day. It's another stage down for the riders, but with cold wind and rain battering the whole central Otago region, the decision is made to implement another contingency for stage four. It's too risky to send the race up to 1,300 metres, so a shortened course is revealed, 62 kilometres and 1,600 metres of climbing. Everyone in the team is, all they want to do is just deliver the rider the best experience we can and keep them safe. We've got guys out in all sorts of different parts of the course, rating them and what the weather's like. So it's always that balance, right? Because, you know, on a, on a big day when there's a front coming through, it's easy to say, oh, look, we'll just put them up the top, they'll be all right, they'll wrap up. But actually, you've got to balance that by it's got to be suitable for every rider and it's, it's got to be safe um, and, and not break people, you know? We're, it's got to be challenging and it's finding that line. That's the magic in these races is where that line is between finding that, that challenge so people can find that character um, and, and not making it just a complete suffer fest. So that's what we're toying with uh, as we create courses and we make changes on the fly with contingencies, etc. The Pioneer is a journey. For every rider, it's a story of highs and lows. And just as in life, character is often about navigating your way through them, not letting the highs get too high or the lows get too low. Nobody in the race knows this better than Johnny Van Leeuwen. He's ridden every one of the four races so far, but not without difficulty. The Pioneer was something pretty awesome, you know, like for, for me in the for, for, for general racing, you know, when the Pioneer came on the scene, it was, if it's particularly for New Zealand, it was something that was like, wow, I think I was literally the first one that signed up for it. Yeah, and it's like they say everything, the first year was always the best, and it was. It was so much fun. So the next year you wanted to go faster again, and what can you do? And, and, and probably one of, the, one of the things I did do was I, and I regret it majorly now, was that um, I decided to change teammates um, because I wanted to go faster and for selfish reasons I wanted to be quicker and I wanted to be better up there, so I changed the teammates. But um, you know, what I realised quite quickly you know, during that race is you know, I couldn't handle well, like, the actual pressure that we were actually putting on ourselves. Every day it was like another notch was being knocked off me. I felt like I was consistently underperforming for him. Uh, to the point where, you know, halfway through it, I broke down. I literally just broke down into a ball on the floor. Um, the big part of that for me was my teammate didn't know, and neither did any of the people around me know. And the thing that was actually really happening was that the biggest fear I had was for people to see me as weak. You know, I'm a mountain biker, I'm a racer, you know, you, you don't show your weakness. You know, it's, it's easy just to say, oh, just harden up and carry on. But in that moment, it feels like everything's falling apart, you know. For most of the field, the pioneer is their idea of fun. For Johnny, failing to live up to his own expectations turned the experience into something toxic. But rather than be broken, Johnny found a way to turn it around. At the end of the day, for me, it, oh, I suffer from a huge amount of anxiety. Uh, and anxiety that leads to depression for me, you know, and, and it was sort of, I'd lost the spark and the fun and aspect of riding bikes. It was all about the competition and the result. And coming back in year three, it was like, I've got unfinished business. I don't want this to define my life. I don't want to be defined by something that went wrong. Um, and so coming back with my wife, uh, my best friend, you know, um, no, it's not wasn't for myself, it was for us, it was us on the journey from this, from what happened to this recovery and now what can we do, you know. And Hayley and I, we've been two years now riding together and out of anything, anything that I've done, riding with her and what we've done in the last couple of years with the Epic Series and stuff has probably been the most fulfilling thing I've ever done. We've, we've raced in Australia, reef to reef, you know, port to port, cape to cape. Um, I've been in the States doing some racing as well, Leadville, um, Breck Epic, stuff like that. And all of those things have been just done in a different light. It's been done for the fun um, and not for the necessarily the competitive side. And I think the big thing for me is, is that it's, it's you're taking away those expectations. For many who struggle with mental health challenges, the hardest thing can be admitting to them and talking about it. 
For Johnny Van Leeuwen, opening up became a great healer. I remember pushing the button, my hand was shaking like this, eh? just wanting to push the go. And I did it, and I just said, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, everyone, everyone now is going to know. Like, so it's, it's officially in the paper, you know? Um, and what I didn't realise was the effect that would have the months later. It was the athletes that I inspired to, the athletes that I raced with them day to day, all of a sudden started contacting me. And that, if anything, gave me energy, it gave me fuel, because I was like, oh my God, I'm not the only one that has been through this or has these problems. The fear I had was that people were going to see me as weak. If anything, it's actually empowered me to actually be open and to be honest, and to actually share my story and actually listen and hear to other people's stories. You know, and, and the fear is actually greater before than after, you know. Support is at the heart of the pioneer. Bonds and friendships are built up during the week and with the pairs based racing, no rider goes through the week alone. When things get tough, there is always a teammate beside you to drag you through. Yeah, he's got to get him home today. Should be right now. You'll have to Keep going, mate. Keep going. There are no losers on the Pioneer. Everyone in the event is winning with each stage that they complete. Every rider has their reason for being here. Marco Zoma and Martin Rechtershot have come from Holland in a bid to complete the Pioneer, Swiss Epic and Absa Cape Epic in the same year. It's a bid that will earn them the title of Epic Legends, a medal owned by only 44 other riders in the world. <sighs> have a good day today. Have you had some bad ones? Yeah, uh, four days. Four days. <laughs> <laughs> Four days were bad. This one is going good. We have a tough week. We're gonna make it tomorrow. Because we want the last medal. The special one, the epic legend. And have you have you done all three in one year? And then it's next year, our rest year. Well, those, those couple of good days in a row, and today you, you suffered, eh? Pushed it a bit hard earlier in the week, I think. <laughs> today, oh, mate. today was tough. No iron team. He was no there. iron team. <laughs> Teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah. Oh, She's bloody. We couldn't keep up with the Fakatani nah, boys today. The Wakatani, they just keep coming back. We call them the Wakatani weeds. Just keep coming back. <laughs> just, a, just, a, just, a, just a bit of friendly rivalry going on between the boys. We just see those yellow shoes oh, yeah. staring up the hill. One of the biggest things that I've come to now is I struggle to the mentality of the elite athlete side. I'm not, I'm not disowning any of the elite athletes. But it's the guy that's out there for a hundred hours, you know? That guy's the guy that should get the medal, you know? Not me who comes across in 25 hours or something. Wow, you know? These men out there suffering four times more than I had. Um, you know, so that, the other people that I look at and just think, well, that's so inspirational. You know, and that actually gives them inspiration now to carry on riding, is to see people like that. Even with the changed course, it's been a hard day on the bike for the pioneers. At the finish in Bannockburn, it's dry and the sun is out. Having slogged through some tough days, the pioneers know that this is a landmark. The race isn't over yet, but with just one more day to go, it feels like they're almost home. After one of the most sustained periods of wet weather for many years in central Otago, it's a relief to wake up on day five to a cold but dry day. This is it, the final day. Time to fuel up for one big last push to the finish. Yeah. It's just one ride, I can do a ride. <laughs> for the event and the riders, the good news is that the route to Queenstown is clear and today's stage can proceed as planned. <laughs> Ready for day five. Last day. It's been a great week. Fantastic. Looking forward to getting home though. Yeah. Everything okay. Ready to go. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. Yeah. The final stage is no procession home. 
The first challenge is the Nevis Saddle, a climb of 1,000 metres in 11 kilometres. They will then be into some real backcountry for 30 kilometres of tough, undulating terrain before the final stretch into Queenstown on the Queenstown Trail Network. It's a relief to the event team that they are finally able to deliver the riders the stage they were promised. Yeah, it's been frustrating, I guess, to say the least. Um, we're disappointed because we had, you know, an epic course lined up that gave the riders a, a bit of everything, really, and they've, they've kind of missed a little bit of that, which, um, which is disappointing. But I think today um, the course is spectacular. It's going to make up for it. They've had, you know, the, the epic days of single tracks to start off the week. They've had some pretty horrific weather thrown at them to to make life tough even if the courses haven't been quite as tough as planned but but today um, should sort of wrap everything up with a, with a bit of a bang. Having battled their way through the last two stages with real grit and determination the defending champions Vink and Rush lead the open men's race by eight minutes. The opening climb up the Nevis saddle is no problem for the experienced road cyclists but eight minutes is no guarantee of victory. The giant Australia off-road pair are waiting to pounce on any mistake or mechanical. It's been a tough week for the Aussies who have struggled in the cold, but they are still very much in it. Behind them, the winger Hamilton team of Sam Osborne and Ryan Sissons hold on to third. The mixed pairs race has been hard for all week. Heading into the final stage, the defending champions Joe Skirman and Josie Wilcox have held on to the red leader's jersey. They lead by over 20 minutes, but the Harris siblings have got stronger as the week's gone on and they're leading the way on the opening climb. The open women's race looks set to go to the defending champion Stonewood Holmes, with Amy Hollenby and Kate McElroy leading by over two hours at the start of stage five. Stage five has all the hallmarks of a Pioneer Classic. Long demanding climbs, stunning vistas and real backcountry surroundings. This is what the Pioneer was intended to be. A challenging experience which echoes the pioneering spirit of the Maori and European explorers who settled the South Island. It's a great way to finish the week in central Otago and especially important to the 2019 event as the Pioneer finishes its stay on the South Island. Next year, the event moves to the North Island of New Zealand for the very first time. We wanted to preserve the integrity of the brand about that idea of always exploring new places and, um, and so you know, we felt that we've done a really uh, good job of exploring this, this sort of lower half of the South Island and so we thought why not take it north. 2020 uh, we're going to be exploring a new part of the country, you know, the pioneering spirit is all about exploration, discovery, new trails and so 2020 we're going to be heading north, it's going to be hubbed in Rotorua and uh, it's going to be a, a great six-day circuit uh, in that central North Island plateau area. A great mixture of um, single-track bike trails. You know, Rotorua is one of the world meccas for, for mountain biking. Uh, the northern end of Taupo has got some great mountain bike riding, and we're going to link all that up with some cycle trails, forestry trails. I mean, it's going to be, I guess, a bit more green, a bit more lush, rivers, lakes, that kind of thing. Um, and different types of trails, you know. We're probably not going to have the, the same epic long climbs that we do here, but there's no shortage of ups and downs uh, through that area, so there'll still be plenty of challenge for riders. Once again, the spirit and character of the Pioneer riders is tested to its limits by cold and strong winds, which make the already demanding stage feel twice as hard. We're walking now. It's all good, it's beautiful out here. <laughs> Still loving it? Yeah, I'm still loving it. I'm warm, sort of sunny. It's not raining. Couldn't be better. Anything to pass the Anything time. Anything keeps you going, eh? Oh, pretty epic for me. And it's one of the biggest things I've done in my life. You don't know what you can do until you give it a go, and uh, here we are. We're nearly done. With over 2,100 metres of climbing to get through in just 40 kilometres, this is one of the toughest stages of the week. Though the scenery is stunning, the effort required to keep moving after a long week of racing is huge. Bloody tough start. Tough start, so honey. This is the last hill, right? It is. Is that? One climb to go. Wow. It's so beautiful, yeah. <laughs> it's great. As the lead riders make their way up the final climb to Cold Pit Saddle, it is Vink and Rush from On Your Bike North Otago still in the lead. With 30 kilometres to go, this is looking like their race to lose. 
giant off-road Australia are almost four minutes behind the leaders, following the wheel of Sam Fox and Sebastian Jane from MarathonMTB.com up the last hill. Six days of tough riding has left little in the tank for some, but at the top of the final hill, the finish line is almost in sight. I want my, I want my medal. Yeah. Go on. Sip your sofa. Thanks for all the help over the weekend. Cheers, Cheers buddy. The top of Cold Pit Saddle drops the pioneers down into the Gibston Valley and onto the home stretch. From here, it's 30 kilometers of relatively gentle cycle trail to the finish line in Frankton. As expected, after leading the race for the last three days, it is the On Your Bike North Otago team of Michael Vink and Tim Rush who crossed the line in first place, successfully defending their title from 2018. Yeah, I mean, both, both times have been very special and uh, especially for different reasons. It certainly doesn't get any easier the more times you do it, but it's, uh, it's really nice to get the win here, especially the last time it's here in the South Island, so it's certainly something we'll never forget. Yeah, the last two days have been rough for me, um, but no, it was good today and um, we rode smooth and smart and, and got it done, so yeah, I'm over the moon. Taking their first podium of the week, MarathonMTB.com are home in second. And behind them, the giant Australia duo of Brendan Johnston and John Odoms cross in third to secure second place overall on GC. Michael and Holly Harris take out the final stage to secure their second of the week and second overall on GC. The overall victory goes to Team Jojo, who make it two in a row. The spirit of camaraderie between the riders is displayed beautifully on the finish line by the top three mixed teams. Uh, we're all fiercely competitive out there while we're racing, but as soon as you come in and get over the finish line and share the stories and, and uh, <laughs> kind of a mutual respect, I guess, for everyone, because we've all, we know what we've all been through out here and, and uh, to get it all finished and be together afterwards is pretty cool. The Stonewood Holmes pair of Amy Hollenby and Kate McElroy take out the Open women's title for the second time and achieve their goal of breaking into the top 20 overall. Oh, we've had a few little funny wee targets that we um, sort of wanted to do. There was a couple of guys' teams that we really wanted to beat, and I've, we've beaten them today, but I don't know whether we've taken a big enough buffer out of them to actually beat them overall, so we'll see when they come in. You know, top 20 in GC or better was became our target when we realised we had the buffer, so, yeah, I'm not sure where we finished up, but it's been a, it's been a great week. In the last week, the pioneers have covered 400 kilometres and hauled themselves through 10,000 metres of climbing. They've come a long way, literally, but also metaphorically. It feels really good, eh? Yeah. yeah. Considering a year ago, there's no way I would have been able to do something like this. It's such an awesome race, and that's what makes it so special. And the countryside and where you go and where you turn up, it's just amazing. That's uh, my third pioneer and the second one was Johnny. And it was funny because two years ago he would never have considered racing with me. <laughs> like it would have been the last thing in his mind. But now he gets it and he really enjoys it. We've had a great time. You know, people often ask us, they say to us, oh, do you argue very much? And I said, we actually argue less on the bike <laughs> than we do actually out. So, no, it's awesome to be finished and awesome to be back here in Queenstown finally. But the Pioneer is very special and like I said before it's just a reunion with a whole lot of friends and hard racing in between. <laughs> it's New Zealand's event day, you know, New Zealand's event and uh, I'm determined to be here at the end. The Pioneer itself has come a long way but in the tradition of its namesakes it's time to move on. The South Island has been an incredible host and has helped turn the event into an icon of the mountain bike world, alongside other greats such as the Absa K Pepe. The finish of the 2019 is only the beginning for the Pioneer as a new chapter opens. Rotorua, the Pioneer fueled by Nutrigrain. See you in 2020.